What is the least commonly known fact you know? A team of scientists were working to genetically modify bananas to be resistant to tropical race 4, a fungus that destroys the banana but isn't noticeable until it's already too late. The head scientist worked tirelessly, trying to create the perfect banana that was also resistant to TR4. He finally did, but the public complained about the taste. He hung himself. Wow 0-100 there. If a compressible fluid flows through a long duct with friction, it will theoretically exit at the speed of sound. Why? I actually had to review my fluid dynamics notes to answer this. Essentially it's a result of conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. If you work through the math, for a subsonic inlet flow you end up with lower pressure, lower density, and higher velocity as you go downstream. This causes velocity to increase up to Mach 1. Why Mach 1? Because the behavior of compressible fluids actually changes at Mach 1. Subsonic flows speed up when the area they are flowing through decreases. However, for supersonic flows it is the opposite, that is, flow speeds up when the area increases. This means that when you have choked flow, which is the maximum flow rate you can force through a given area, the flow going through that area is at Mach 1. Edit, also this only happens for ducts that are above a critical length that would cause exit velocity to equal Mach 1 for a given inlet velocity. When the duct becomes longer than this, the inlet flow slows down, if subsonic, or speeds up, if supersonic, such that it exits at Mach 1. Edit 2, just to clarify for any new readers, it's also only valid for adiabatic flow, that is, there is no heat transfer between the duct and its surroundings. In addition the analysis assumes constant cross-section area for the duct. So if ducts were longer they'd be faster? If you're ever planning to beat someone up with a baseball bat, wrap a sock around the end of it so if they grab the bat, it'll just slide right out and you can continue to bash them. Pantyhose actually work even better because it's thin enough to not cushion the blows at all, but slips off just as easily. And the bad luck's 10x hotter. Alcohol doesn't make you lose your memory, it stops you forming memories while you're drunk. A volcanic eruption 70,000 years ago, M.T. Tobar, almost killed the entire human population. It caused winter to last from a dozen to 1,000 years, and left an estimated 10,000 breeding pairs of humans. Jiggity! Penguins will offer other sex for materials for a nest. A shark is the only fish that can blink with both eyes. What function does it serve? Blinking. Why do sharks need to blink though lol? So their eyes don't dry out bro. No eye drops in the sea. Dry erase markers erase permanent markers from nearly anything. Pablo Escobar's cartel spent $2,500 a month just for rubber bands. To hold all their cash together. They also lost roughly 2 billion a year due to spoilage from rats and mold. When the dwarf planet Eris was originally discovered, the astronomer who found it was a huge Xena, warrior princess fan. Until it was officially named it was known as Xena and its moon, Dysnomia, was called Gabriel, Xena's sidekick on the show. I have no idea why I know this. Edit, it's been brought to my attention that Gabriel was not a sidekick, they were in fact soulmates. My apologies to any I offended. Jeremy Bentham's shriveled embalmed head was used as a football once. It was on display at University College London from 1850 to 1975, when a group of students stole it demanding that a £100 donation be donated to charity. They returned the head, but it was stolen a second time, and used as a football by prankster students. After it was returned the second time it was removed from display. Edit, since posting this I found this banger about Bentham's head, not my song though, so have fun listening and give them some love. Charles-Henri Sanson, royal executioner of Paris at the time of the revolution, was in charge of executing revolutionaries and royals. In his diaries, he described particular executions that he found peculiar or difficult and he wrote about executing Louis Capet, or Louise V. As a religious man who believed in the sanctity of the king. He felt extremely guilty after the king's death and even sought solace with a priest. He was also allowed to keep the pair of shoes worn by the king. His diaries were only divulged decades after the fact, 
and if the revolutionaries had learned of Samson's feelings, he would have probably been the next head in the basket. When losing weight, the lost mass leaves your body through exhaled breath. Same thing backwards, a tree's mass comes from CO2 in the air, not the ground. Blew my mind. That it takes three times the heat to melt the oxide layer on aluminium than it takes to melt the aluminium itself when welding. Do you know why that is the case? Melting point of aluminium oxide is 2072 degrees celsius and the melting point of aluminium is 660 degrees celsius. If your eyes each see a different picture, and they're just a little different but not too different, you alternate between seeing out of one or your other eye exclusively and seeing a combination of both pictures. Discovered this as part of my ongoing PhD in visual perception. You didn't say it had to be an interesting fact. If you burned all the oil and natural gas currently estimated to exist in the world all at once, don't do this. It would only raise the world's CO2 levels to levels Earth has experienced many times in the past. The world would warm a few degrees, coastlines would rise a little, etc. But then there'd be no more oil or natural gas. Problem fixed, right? Wrong. This is not the case for coal. Coal releases far more CO2 per unit than oil or natural gas. If you burned all the coal we would hit CO2 levels never seen before on the planet. So if you want to cut back CO2 emissions, focus primarily on transitioning from coal power plants to nuclear or other carbon-free power sources. Not that oil isn't a major contributor, but it isn't able to cause nearly as much damage in the long run. I say this isn't commonly known because nearly everyone seems to think the issue is oil and they feel personal guilt for driving too much or not using an electric car or whatever. Nope. Most oil is used by industry commerce, not by consumers, and coal makes up a bigger percentage of CO2 emissions than oil. Focus on the problem, not what makes you feel better. Edit, I did do the math on all this at one point. I don't have access to it now though, and don't want to do it all over again. If you want to give it a go, look up various estimates on the Earth's fossil fuel reserves. Then look up how much CO2 is released by burning each type. Then work out how much CO2 would be released in total if we burned all of each type. Then work out how much that amount of CO2 would raise the atmospheric percentage. Then look up CO2 levels from different periods in Earth's past, and the temperature ranges different levels gave us. Additionally, look up what the CO2 levels were before mankind started burning fossil fuels, and what they are today, and compare that to the total fossil fuel usage so far. Reasonable estimates on all these numbers are available. Compare multiple sources to make sure you're getting the best estimate you can find. Do recognize that they are all estimates, but by the time you're done you'll be within a reasonable range of reality, plus or minus say 25% error. Which is a lot of error, but not enough to strongly affect what I'm saying here. How wide your mouth is actually plays a big role in your attractiveness. Don't ask how I learned this. So is a wide mouth or a small mouth attractive? I'd imagine an ice in between. Zebras will always move towards a black and white striped wall. 1 in 100 babies have will have a congenital heart defect. It's the number one birth defect worldwide. When people hear congenital heart defect they usually think it's just a hole in the heart. While that's true. There's over 35 congenital heart defects anyone can be born with, only a few are genetic, the rest sadly just happens. And there's no cure. It's lifelong. Even open heart surgery isn't a cure. I have 5 congenital heart defects and I do my best to raise awareness for CHD. Even though it's the number one birth defect worldwide, somehow it's not well known and oftentimes people don't know the true facts about it. And that needs to change. Due to my health and very very long list of other health issues I can't do a lot. I spend about 90% of the time at home because doing everyday things are getting harder. I'm in my second round evaluation for heart bilateral lung transplant. But I can't do this. To educate people about congenital heart defects. The phrase hands down comes from horse racing and refers to a jockey who is so far ahead that he can afford drop his hands and loosen the reins, usually kept tight to encourage a horse to run, and still easily win. The name Dustin derives from an old Norse name Torstein meaning Thor's stone. Sometimes dropping a satellite TV box from 5 feet will fix it. 
Why you ask? Sometimes the switching relays that choose between even and odd transponders get stuck. We call it a 5 foot adjustment when nothing else works as a last resort before sending back. I literally take the bad box outside, hold it out straight armed and flat, and drop. It worked more often than I'd like to admit. San Marino's national soccer team have won one single football match. Ever. They have lost over 300 matches. A lot of common vegetables are man-made by cross-breeding cabbage, similar to the process of developing a new dog breed. Broccoli is the result of Italians breeding cabbage more than 2000 years ago. The Tesla Model X is too heavy to drive over the Brooklyn Bridge, legally speaking. Despite being incredibly wealthy, IKEA's late founder drove a 30-year-old piece of crap Volvo. If you were to buy all the bolts in a Pagani Huadera, it would set you back $112,000. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, collard greens, Brussels sprouts and several other vegetables are all cultivars of the same plant, Brassica rollerasia. The word bookkeeper is the only word with three double letters in a row. The fatality chance of gunshot to the head is not 100%. The space between the earth and the moon can fit every single planet in our solar system. You can see the infrared light emitted from a remote controller through the camera on your phone. Great method to check if the batteries are dead. Wombat's poop cubes their intestines have ridges to shape it so it doesn't roll away in order to mark their territory. The tail of the fish shaped soy sauce bottles you get with your sushi is meant to be used to spread wasabi. And most wasabi is just colored horseradish. Apparently, real wasabi is quite rare expensive. There are more trees on earth than there are stars in our galaxy. 3 trillion. Edit, also the mother of Mike Nesmith, the guitarist in the Monkees, invented liquid paper the typing correction fluid. The reason there is an Easter bunny and eggs associated with Easter is because before Christians remodeled it pagans believed that both eggs and rabbits were signs of fertility and new starts. There's a law in Germany that says if a beekeeper's bees leave the hive then they are the legal owner of the bees only as long as they are in pursuit of them. If for some reason the swarm merges with another beekeeper's bees then the rightful owner is the beekeeper that remains in pursuit. Like a last man standing kinda deal. Humans and giraffes have the same number of cervical vertebrae. A moment is actually equivalent to 90 seconds. The US has trained dolphins to guard the nuclear stockpile in Washington state. They are trained to put clamps on divers, which then inflate and drag the diver to the surface and highlight their location. Almost everyone is familiar with the calling of a horse race, since it is one of the most important and exciting parts of horse racing. However, not many people actually know origin of it. It's pretty obvious that it had to start somewhere, but where exactly? Well, on the 5th of February, 1927 the film Sunset Derby was being shot at the Tijuana racetrack. A track official noticed the where director was using a microphone and a loudspeaker to direct his crew and actors during the filming. The idea came to him that if he had a microphone set up in the steward's booth that led to a set of speakers, he could call out the positions of the horses. Later that day, he had it set up without telling any of the patrons to the track about it. Back then people would follow the horses themselves with binoculars and often were unable to get a great view at certain angles until the stretch. When people first experienced it that day, they were extremely confused because all of sudden there was this voice booming over the track. After they got used to it, they loved hearing a race being called and it became an everyday thing at that small track. Now, it's an extremely important part of modern day racing all across the world that has led to hilarious moments like the famous My Wife Knows Everything call, and it all started at that small Mexican track. Red hair and blue eyes is the rarest combination. Fun fact that is quite known. Scientists like to be funny and named lots of genes with references to pop culture. Monty Python I am not dead yet gene, Pokemon gene, Sonic gene, etc. Less known fact, this has become an issue when those genes are involved in diseases. It causes uncomfortable discussions between physician and patients when explaining their disease or their child's disease because people get offended, find it inappropriate or straight up think they are being messed with. Scientists are being discouraged to name genes like that. Link. Frederick Jacob Bozius, in the 1930s had patented an invention, 
the electric blender and went to Fred Waring, the man who taught America how to sing for financial backing for his invention $25,000 later, Waring owned the company, Miracle Mixer, he made some small improvements to the blender and renamed the company the Waring Corporation. The Waring blender is still used in restaurants, homes, and hospitals. It was a tool of Jonas Salk in the development of the Salk polio vaccine.